Hi, we're going to work on choosing good KPIs. And a KPI should be specific and be able to define success and failure based on our user or business objective. And we're going to use the WHW method to define KPIs and choose some that will really give us the best way to tell a story with data. So usually when you ask a customer or someone, what does success look like? You usually get a very vague answer. So if you're asking a company, maybe they say more sales is going to be a measure of success. But I'm here to tell you that's a terrible KPI. And let's find out why. So here we are with more sales. If you look at the blue line, that's last year, and we look at the orange line, which is this year, we had more sales this year. One extra sale per month. Is that success? We don't know because the user has not defined what our objectives are. So when we're defining success, KPIs should measure real success or failure against an objective. KPIs should not be vague and lack specificity. KPIs measure performance to a goal. And in this case, we don't know what the goal is. KPIs allow us to adjust our strategies based on whether we're succeeding or failing. And don't forget, the KPI defines what success looks like. So in this case, we don't have everything. We don't know what success look, looks like. Should we have 50% more sales, 20% more sales, 10% more sales per month, per year, per day? So let's make a KPI smart. And smart is a mnemonic device, but it's a little bit difficult to remember. Like smart, you have specific, simple, sensible, and significant, measure, measurable, for the M, which is meaningful and motiv motivating, achievable, agreed and attainable, relevant, reasonable, realistic, resourced and results based and time bound, time based, time limited, time cost, timely and time sensitive. That is a lot to remember. So we're going to use the WHW method, which is what, how much and when. Very simple. So let's go back and look at some examples of what uh, we can actually produce as a KPI. We can grow followers. We can increase ROI. We can lower costs. Now, that is the first part of our KPI. But we need to say how much we want to grow followers. Maybe we want to grow to 100,000. Maybe you want to increase ROI to two to one, lower cost $4 per unit. That's a decent strategy of building some functional KPIs, but we can go one step further. We can say when, which is our time bound element of that smart goal. Maybe you want to grow followers to 100,000, 2023. We want to increase ROI by Q3, two to one. And we want to lower cost $4 per unit by Q3. This is a easier way to formulate our KPIs. But the SMART method is also great, but this is just an easier way to remember things and create quick KPIs and discussion when you're an analyst. So let's go back to our original example, improve sales or just get more sales. So we know the first part of our KPI is the what? Improve sales. How much and when? We want to improve sales by 25%. When? By the end of the year. So now that we have that information, we can create meaningful visuals that really tell a story. We can create models and targets so we know if we're reaching our goals. 
since we wanted to improve sales by 25% by the end of the year, we can look at this chart and see that we've gotten to our goal by 90% with three months left in the year. This is 2021 on this chart. So we can also build a story around this. So we know that if we look at this chart and we look at that orange line, we can see that something happened around Q3 to allow us to explode in sales. And we know from this narrative that there was a shift in strategy which triggered explosive sales in Q3 exceeding all expectations. And expectations would be our models and our target. Remember, make your KPI smart. And a great way to do that is just use a WHW method. What, how much, and when. I hope that helps. Thank you.